Can you read my abstract? Um, I was sort of planning in the beginning to do a more tutorial type discussion. Um, and I realized that with a 10 minute talk, I, I wouldn't really be able to get into the, the kind of uh, uh, too many, wouldn't be able to motivate the reason why I'm going into all these details about metaprogramming properly and why I care about data structures, which, you know, the compiler, uh, you can give extra information to the compiler, like the, the length of an array or, or, or the types of a, of a tuple, um, why we're interested in that. So uh, I've been thinking about how we want to use, how I want to use data in Julia. And um, I just thought I'd give a more motivational reason behind all the metaprogramming, <laughs> which goes into this, this um, package I'm developing right now called Tabulas. Okay. So uh, where all this is coming from, well, I got a little bit of inspiration from a couple posts on the internet. Um, what, what, once I saw a, uh, a post by Tim Holly where he, he was sort of saying a, an abstract array is, is kind of like a multi-dimensional associative where you, you have this mapping from indices to values. And uh, I saw an, another post comparing Julia and Julia's sort of data frames um, framework to, to Pandas and so on. And they were saying they really appreciated the way the sort of the data structure itself was very transparent. They knew what was happening behind the scenes and that empowered them to use it uh, a little bit easier, right? So this is sort of the motivation behind where, where I'm coming from, if you keep that in mind. Okay, so the problem with data. Once upon a time, I was, I was in academic, more or less, and uh, I didn't really have to worry about this. I'd make my own data and it'd all be in one language, and if I had to write it to disk, I'd read it and write it myself. But uh, yeah, those of us in the real world um, will probably recognize this. Boom. That's the problem with data. We're gonna, we get data on our computer, in our memory, um, in all different forms. It, it, come, it comes in JSON and, it, you know, all these different ways of representing data, not just on disk, but also in the memory of your computer, okay? So I, I want to talk about a way of um, sort of unscrambling all these differences and getting to the heart of, uh, of um, what, of, of accessing the, the data, okay? So I can't really talk about generic data because that could be just anything. So I'll just focus on tabular data. So something with rows and columns. Um, I was just thinking it would be easy if there's a way if there's just a simple single interface for, for all the different types of tables, it'd be like abstract array. We know how to index an abstract array and do all the really basic things with an abstract array. And if we could get it into this form really, really easily, um, that'd be even better. Okay, so just a, a, I sort of turned the talk upside down. I'll, I'll give the kind of results of all this thinking at the beginning and then discuss why I kind of went this way of, of implementing this. So here we have just a standard Julia array that I've wrapped in one of these tabulas table, which is a two-dimensional tabular storage container. Okay, so the only thing to really notice here is that it's, it's sort of highlighting the indices of this matrix. One, two, three, four is the columns and the rows. Okay, so there's nothing really fancy there. But the, the, um, oh, and series, series is a, a one-dimensional version of this. It's more or less like an associative between keys and, and elements. So it's just the one dimensional analog of a table. Um, but you know, this structure can understand not just matrices, but like nested vectors, as we got here at the bottom that we're creating. And the structure can understand how to, to read nested dictionaries, dictionaries of dictionaries. And um, also, it sort of understands that you might want to nest your dictionaries in different orders. Like if you're reading JSON, you often have, you won't have a dictionary of vectors, you often have a vector of dictionaries and so on. So, you know, if you just have access to this data, why can't I just interpret it the right way around? So, you know, we can also, the transpose symbol here um, just lets you more or less index it in the opposite order, going from inside out to outside in, okay? So th this table thing is a really lightweight wrapper. It's not really doing anything to your data. It's not ingesting it and putting it in its favorite format. It just lets you read arbitrary nested structures and it, know it knows about you know, all the basic built-in types in, in Julia. Um, I'll skip forward a few, here we go. 
Um, here, here's an interesting table. So all data comes from real sources in the end. And last night, I, I scraped the internet and found this on GitHub. Um, yeah, it's a bit interesting. Uh, so here we have a, this table. Um, and some of the columns here have different types. So some of the names are strings. And the other, the other lines of code in Julia are um, integers. Okay, so uh, I've sort of got this way of representing more or less um, a named tuple um, so that we can do this in a type stable way so that you can access one of these rows or one of these elements and the compiler can figure out the type of the thing you're asking for. And this is using this L string macro which just creates a singleton. Okay. Um, yeah, and, and then the sort of the magical thing is, no matter what type of data you have here, you can just index it in sort of the way you do abstract array, using colons and scalars. And you can also index it in um, just fancy indexing, I guess we call that, where you um, can take a subset of rows or columns. So you can do a select statement or a filter kind of um, thing, operation on a table. Um, here, we, here we're sort of seeing there's a bit of a a competition here between Stefan and Viral to see who can delete Julia first. <laughs> I don't know who will win. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, and the other thing we have in Julia is we all create our own structs. We like creating our own data types. So this thing also knows how to just look inside a struct in a nice type stable way. Again, if you want to index it, you use these L string macros. OK, so the, the point here is just to give you a nice, easy view of your data and that you can interface it with the same way you would deal with other data, which is essentially a table, without worrying about the internal details of it. And it should, should be relatively fast. <sighs> All right, so that's sort of the output. Um, this is where I'm sort of thinking about uh, how, I, how I arrived at this. Um, so an, a table is more or less a two-dimensional container. It has rows and columns. Okay? And if you know the row number and the, the column name, um, then you'll be able to find the value. Okay? So it's like a mapping. It's like in a two-dimensional associative. Um, and we might also be interested in one-dimensional data, like a series sometimes. Or we might be interested in three-dimensional data cubes. So kind of like abstract array, it's sort of a multi-dimensional sort of concept. Um, what I wanted to implement was something that was really completely unopinionated about how you lay out your data internally. It's really up to you. It's how have you got it, or however you think will be most optimal for accessing it according to your needs. Okay? So it doesn't really interfere with what you've created, um, unless you ask it to. And, you know, ob and obviously some interface for getting to the data, indexing, and maybe some more operations we'll need in the future. Yeah. So um, an another observation I, I sort of made is, when we, when we think of um, things like a data frame, we're really thinking the columns all have names, and then we have a vector of you know, a, a rows, row 1 to row n. Okay? So, we, um, so data frames typically have this kind of structure where they are something like a dictionary of vectors. Um, so, however, you know, tables in general, in the abstract sense, that we, you know, the everyday sense, not, not, not the data frame sense. You know, they, they often have rows labels, which aren't integers. They, they, they can be categorical as well. So a great example is um, a confusion table, where the columns and the rows are, are essentially ex have to be the same indices, right? Um, that's sort of what a confusion matrix is. If you don't know what this is, it's sort of like the probabilities of um, um, thinking or, or, or predicting that something is x given that it was actually y. Yeah. So all these sort of everyday table things. So I was just sort of thinking, you know, we should be able to transpose tables. We should be able to have any, any index we like, just like an associative. Any, any of the indices in any of the dimensions can be any, any set of any type that you like, just so long as they're unique and um, they form a Cartesian product. Um, so the, the package itself introduces um, this tabular n type, wrapper type, um, with its uh, one-dimensional series and, and two-dimensional table. 
which most of the implementation focuses on those. Um, and it just simply wraps the data you've got. And you tell it how you want, to, how you want it to um, sort of interpret it using things like transpose and, and, uh, and so on. And uh, so, so it, 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 it sort of supports the full range of indexing behavior and views and, and, set, and set index as a work in progress um, that you get with abstract array, which is really what you want. You want to just have a simple Julian way of selecting a few columns or selecting a few rows or selecting one row or one column. Okay? Um, now, unlike a data frame, you kind of really have to index a table with two indices because um, I haven't decided what type is the column and which type is the um, row. So if you index it with an integer, I don't really know whether you're getting a, a row or a column back. So you have to index it with two indices. Um, to deal with the, the types, um, multiple types, heterogeneous types, we, we wrap it up in this container, which is just a tuple of pairs. Um, the indices, if they are singleton types, then during inference, Get index will, will figure out which one you actually mean and propagate the type information. And yeah, so the L, L string is just for convenience. Um, and there's a few other conveniences about this tabulate function, which can bring data in from other forms and make it into a uh, efficient type stable table. And here's another one. So yeah, you can turn your yucky JSON um, and sort of accelerate it, so to speak. Um, yeah, that's all I have time for. So, uh, yeah, thank you very much, and, uh, yeah.